we're going to be continuing our series, which is already up there, which is what? What's holding you back? That's right, what's holding you back? And so, last week, Pastor Lupe, what did he talk about? I couldn't hear y'all. Music. Music, that's right. How music can sometimes hold you back from having that deeper relationship with God, with Christ, right? Uh, Pastor said it's hard to listen here when you're not listening here. All right? Let's, let's remember that. It's hard to listen in your heart. It's hard to hear God when you're not listening to Him but when you're not talking to him, when you're not listening to stuff that will praise him and that can help you, right? Well, tonight I want to talk about another thing that could be holding you back. And that thing can be fear, right? Now, uh, there's, there's things, the fear is a wide variety of stuff, right? You can be afraid of clowns. I know someone in here that's afraid of clowns. We're, we're going to be using that later. So whenever he decides to take a vacation, y'all, let's fill his office with clowns. That would be... Come, come on. We have to fill his office with clowns. But uh, some people can be scared of spiders, ants, uh, or, or maybe the ocean. Now, uh, I don't know if y'all... I don't know if y'all can tell this, but me personally, it's always been abandoned. I wonder why. <laughs> if you don't get it, maybe someone will tell you. <laughs> but today, the fear I want to discuss is the fear of what if. He meant as a joke. Right? right? Now, maybe some of y'all in here are like, what if? I'm not scared of a couple of words. What if doesn't know who I am, dog? I stand on business every single day. Yeah, who, who out here, when what if comes, y'all just thug it out? I think you do not thug it out. You put your hand down, sir. <laughs> you put your, hey, not Judah, I know Judah, yeah. Yes, sir, Judah. But okay, let, let me give y'all a few examples. Let's say, who, who in here has a, wants to do their dream job, right? Or wants to start a business? Dream job or start a business? All right, a couple of you, oh, wow, okay. Lots of so entrepreneurs in here. All right. Let's say you want to do that, right? And you get the, a fear. What if I fail? All right? What if I fail? Or, or maybe you want to uh, surrender your life to God. You're, you're on the fence about it, and you want to fully surrender your life to God, right? But you, but you have a thought of, what if, what if I fail you, God, again? Or, or maybe you want to minister to someone. You want to tell someone about the word. You, you're, you're pumped. You're hyped about it. You're like, I, I can't wait to go out there. I can't wait to minister. And then you get, what if they don't care what I have to say? What if they don't care what, what, what God, has, God wants me to tell them? You know your what ifs, youth. Let's be honest. We all know what our what if is. You see, fear comes in all shapes and sizes. It's a big variety. It's hard to, to trace it to one thing. Whether it be making a decision or, or being afraid of messing up, the point I'm trying to tell you today is fear is not of God. It will hold you back from what God has for you. You see, fear is designed to limit our capability. It is created to make you believe the lies we are told by the enemy sometimes. And sometimes even ourselves. Sometimes we, we allow ourselves to hold ourselves back because we are listening to this one. But can I tell you something? You know what fear really is? Fear is misplaced trust. Hmm. Fear is misplaced trust. So what have you placed your trust in? What is your what if battle? Tonight is the night that that misplaced trust will be redirected towards God, who conquered all fear. If you have your Bibles, let's flip to Psalms 56, 3 through 4. And it should be up there. It says, but when I am up, afraid, I will put my trust in you. I don't want to hear just that I say, oh, I will put my trust in you. you. 
I praise God for it is promise. I trust God, so why should I be afraid? Be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? me. Thank you. Me. Now, what is the scripture saying? When I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you, God. But, but verse 4, verse 4 is saying, I praise God for what he has promised. When I trust God, why should I surrender? Oh, wait, no, uh, yeah. Why should I surrender to my fear? When I have my full trust, my full faith in God, why should I surrender to my fear? It's okay to be afraid in life. The issue is when we surrender to that fear. Fear is faith. Uh, fear is faith. Just that's in the wrong direction. So, so what if I mess up? And you, if, if any of y'all are thinking that, what if I mess up? What if I'm a failure? What if they are right about me? What if I will never succeed about the things that I want to do in life? Will I ever be the person I want to be if I'm listening to that? Where is my faith? Where is my trust? lying right now? Is it lying in God or is it lying in my what ifs? Is it lying in, in what, what is it good for me? You see, you see here now, when, where, faith, where your faith is lying is most likely where you're going to follow. It is, it is, it's either God you're trusting or, or it's the what ifs. And if you allow your what is to determine where you are going to go, then guess what's going to happen? If I allow my what ifs, if I start thinking I'm going to fail, then I'm going to start believing I'm going to fail. Hmm. Why? Because my trust, my faith is in my what ifs. It's, it's not rocket science to, to, to be like, if, if I'm constantly thinking about it, if I'm constantly thinking about failure, dreaming about failure, then I'm going to fail. But when your faith is in God, and you put your trust in a God who will never fail you, why should you be afraid? You should, because you have given your trust to the most dependable person you could have ever given it to. And I'm not saying that when you live with God, when you, when you have faith in Him, that you'll never be afraid again. No, we're human, we're, we're, we're bound to be anxious, we're bound to slip up, we're, we're bound to make mistakes. But when your trust is in the right person, then things can start to get better for you. You see, us as a whole, we put our trust in our circumstances. We put our trust in our what is. And that's what fear really is, when we put that trust in those things. We, we uh, put our trust in our ever-changing circumstances and we, and we hope, and we hope that maybe if my circumstances change, maybe if, if things start to go differently, then maybe, just, just a big maybe, I can start to feel better again. Maybe my what-ifs will go away if my circumstance will change. But when your faith is in God, that faith Take your trust and lead it to God, who is what? The king of your situations, the king of your circumstances. That's what faith is going to do. When your faith is in God, it's, it's going to eventually lead you to trust him. And a lot of us in this place need to be humble with that. That we aren't facing our what ifs alone. That whenever we have a what if, when, when we have something that we are afraid to do, we have friends that can help us along the way. And, and it's true. A lot of us in here, including me, can be stubborn at times, all right? And uh, don't like admitting you're wrong. Like for me, I know that when I know how to do something and some guy who doesn't know me tries to correct me, I, I, can, I can get a little bit mad at them. Because this, this is a guy I don't even know and I'm trying to correct me on what I do or and stuff I, I do. And, and sure, I'll let him have his moment, but it bothers me. Because when I'm mad about that person, I don't want to ask for his help again. Uh, and so admitting you're wrong can, can hold you, uh, not admitting that you're wrong can hold you back. It says in Peter 5, 6 through 7, 
It's up there. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all of your worries and cares to God. Where he cares about you. About you. About you. you. When you take your anxieties, when you take your fears, when you take your what ifs, you need to humble yourself. When you think that you are the source, that you are the answer, that you are the going to solve your problems, Peter is saying right there that when you think those things, you are lacking humility. Because the scripture is saying, humble yourself and give your worries, your cares to God. Humble yourself. Humble yourself so you can give your worries and cares to God. When you're not being humble, when you're not giving it to God, you're basically telling him, I'm going to handle this. I'm going to handle my what ifs. I'm going to do this by myself. How many of us in here have, have done this? Not only to just God, but to, to the people around us. Where we refuse to ask for help even though we, we need it. We refuse to ask for help even though we, we so desperately are digging ourselves in a hole. But if we have that friend that can help us, then, then maybe, then, then things can get better because they can help us. We are made to live life alone. What did God do when Adam felt lonely? Anyone? Gave him Eve. He gave him someone to live with, to talk to, to worship God with. When Adam was lonely, God gave him someone. God gave him a friend. But because we are so prideful, we are holding ourselves back from the freedom that God provides. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, it says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. <laughs> so when you need help, when you're stumbling and you don't know what to do, it's always nice to have that friend to reach out. When you're struggling with your what if, you don't have to keep it to yourself. You can help. Uh, not, your friends can help. And you can help them too. You can help them with their what if. They can help you with their, your what if. Because it says that two are better than one. And that when one person fails, when one person falls and he is alone, what does it say he is? In real trouble. Good effort, Elisa. I love the effort, man. So, so when you are holding it in, when you are holding something that shouldn't, isn't yours to hold, you are only damaging yourself. You're only hurting yourself. You're only going to, to hurt yourself and you're going to hurt your relationship with God. So humble yourselves and give God what you need to give. Give Him your what if. Give Him your struggles. Give Him your worries because all God wants to do is help you. And back, back to, the, to the fear part, right? All of us have felt fear. And if you said you've never been afraid, then you are lying. Having felt fear is normal. It's, it's, it's human. But what is it that you're scared of? I want you to think, what is it that I'm afraid of? Are you afraid of taking risks? Of making a first impression about someone that you don't even know? Are you afraid of failing? Are you afraid of messing up? We have to remember that fear is made to limit us, to hold us back. If you allow fear to take control, you can start to believe it. We allow, we allow them to take control of our lives. We allow them to lead us and let us think what we are capable of. Who in here, oh, well, I already asked that question. A lot of people in here want to start a business, right? Want to do that dream job they have that, that some people might consider not successful. But to, but to do those things, you have to be able to take a risk. But here's what fear comes into play. Here's where the what if comes into play. What if I start my business and things don't work out? What if I fail this business? What if I fail my, my career? 
What if, what if people are right that I should just quit pursuing my dream? I should quit doing what I want to do. I should quit doing what God has called me to do because I'm going to fail. When we start, we start to believe those things. And what do we do because of it? We back out. We back out because we fear failing. We, we fear proving people right. Making, allowing them to make us think that we are failures. But it just doesn't have to be with starting a business. What if you want to minister? And, and, and you have a, a what if fear of rejection. What if they turn me down? What if they make fun of me? What if they, what if, what if they don't want to hear what I have to say? What if they don't listen? And, 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 or, or maybe, maybe something new. For, for people who are in a doubting season or, or new to faith, what if this Christian thing doesn't work out? What if I fail God? What if people look at me differently? They don't want to associate with, with, with me because I believe in God. And if, if, if you're wondering those things, what if, what if this Christian thing doesn't work out? What if I fail God? I just want to let y'all know that you have a whole community of people who have been there before, who have felt that before, who have maybe not, uh, who have thought that before or have thought similar things of that before. So, so when you're thinking that, you, I just want to tell you, y'all, not, you are not alone. Okay, but maybe your what if wasn't said tonight. But maybe it's the what if of struggling with my identity. Or, or what, the what if of a certain sin. Or, or anger. Or lust. But have y'all caught on with the common theme that's been going on around here? Have y'all caught on to the two words that are stopping us, that are making us afraid? What if? At least say I was on point again. What if? What if I get hurt? What if this? What if that? You see, we are only viewing things from a fear angle. We are only viewing things from, from a failure mindset. We, we are only viewing things from, from a fear, from a fear angle. I'm looking right here, and this is a, if this is all I'm looking at, if all I'm looking at is this curtain, then how am I gonna see y'all? If, if all I'm looking at is this curtain, who am I going to talk to? You see, if all you're looking at is that curtain, then you're not going to have friends in life. And, it, it's, it's a, it, and not to be rude, because if I'm just going to talk to that curtain right over there, people are going to think I'm weird. They're going to think I'm crazy. So when you view things from a fear angle, all you're going to think is that you're a failure. All you're going to think is negativity. All you're going to imagine is, is failing. Can I tell y'all something? Stop living by your what ifs. Instead, live by your what can. What can God do through me? What can happen if I take a chance, if I start that business, what can happen is I become successful and I can give back to what God has already given me. What can happen if I minister to someone and, and they get saved right there on the spot and then they can minister? What can happen if I give my life fully to Jesus, if I fully surrender my life to Him and, and I live a life of joy, peace, and, and that one day I can be on the stage? So, so youth, I want y'all to realize this. Stop looking at things from a failure mindset. Stop thinking of things from a failure mindset. And instead, start thinking from things from a faithful mindset. It's a whole different card game when you stop viewing that curtain. And you start looking at the crowd. Mm. That's when a real difference can be made. Come on. Because Second Timothy... 1 7 says, For God has not given me a spirit of what? Fear. But of love, power, power and of sound mind. I know that. So God has not given you a spirit of rejection. He has not given you a spirit of failure. 
And most importantly, he has not given you a spirit of fear. You, uh, the, you see, growing up, this is my favorite scripture. Because it reminded me of, of who I was through Christ. It reminded me what God has given me. That, that God never gave us a spirit of fear. He never gave us a worrying spirit. So whenever I was afraid as a child, whenever I was afraid when I was younger, I would always repeat 2 Timothy 1.7. Because it encouraged me to take that next step. Steps. Huh? We need steps to go to different floors, right? That's another thing fear will stop you from trying to do. Take that next step. God wants you to take that next step. God wants you to go from floor one to floor two. That's what God wants you to do. But your what ifs will try to stop you from doing that. God has called us out to serve, to minister, to give. But to do that, we have to take that step. But fear can come, into, can come in like this. What if I'm not built for it? I'm, I'm barely able to manage on floor one. I'm barely able to manage being a new Christian. What if I'm not ready for it yet? And let me tell you something. We never start out ready. No, it is through God that he develops us. And it's the more we stand with God that he trains us, that he guides us. And through him that we become ready. No one who was ever something was, was ever ready. No, the perfect time will never come to you. And, that, and it's time we open our eyes and realize that. That you need to take your chance now because you will never be ready. And that's okay. It's okay. Because God wants to develop you where you are right now. So he can make you into that leader that he has called you out to be. So stop holding yourself back. You're holding yourself back with that. Stop letting your what ifs, your worries, your doubts stop you from God's calling. Because don't let fear determine what you can do. Let God determine what you can do. Let God determine what you can do. Don't let fear say what you can or can't do. Because you aren't defined by your fear. You are defined by your God. You aren't defined by what your fears tell you. You are defined by what your God tells you. What does he say? He says, I have seen you, I have chosen you, and I have sent you. Don't let fear determine how your life is going to turn out. Don't let fear hold you back from God's calling. We have to be brave. And being brave doesn't mean not being scared. It means being brave and doing, a, doing it scared. That's what brave really is, doing it scared. So anyone here wants to start a business, do it scared. If anyone here wants to minister to someone, do it scared. If you want to make a big decision, do it scared. Have faith that God will persevere and will be there for you. Because when you trust him when you're scared, when you decide to put your faith in him when you're scared, he will be there for you. Because it is better to do so, because it is better to do it with your all than do nothing at all. Hmm. You can try and fail. That, that's okay. But you can never try to fail. You can try and fail. You can give it your all and fail, but never try to fail. You don't want to end up 50 years from now wondering what could have happened if I stood up, if I took that step, if I didn't let fear determine what I was going to do. Because the one thing we never get is more time. So you need to decide whether you're going to allow fear to hold you back. If you're going to let fear influence you, if you're, or, or if you're going to allow God to develop you. Because we need to remember that the God of our tomorrow is still the God of our today. That the God of our success is still the God of our process. So God sees you during your process and he wants you to trust him. Don't let a little bit of fear stop you from feeling the full force of God's love. Why? Because we got to remember 2 Timothy 1.7. And it says, for God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. But of? Power. Love and a sound and mind. And of sound mind. Thank you. And, and uh, for this next one, I want to talk about, and, uh, I'm going to enjoy talking about this one. 
What if they judge me for loving God? What if they see me differently because, because I choose to follow God? It's the embarrassment of living for, for God. What will they think of me because I choose to follow Jesus? And I feel like oh, this, just, just a lot of Christians in general struggle with this one. A lot of people will put John 3.16 in their bios, Philippians 4.13 in our bios, he is risen in our bios, ain't that right? But I, I, can just, I can just imagine one day, one day when we die, when we're in heaven, and, and we're, we run into Paul, one of the most influential people of all time. And, and, he, and he's talking to us, he's like, what did you do? How did you, how did you serve? How did you tell people that you were a Christian? How did you minister? And we're just like, oh, I have a phone? It's really cool, I, I can go on and, I, I, there's these apps where I can talk to people on the other side of the world, and Paul, and Paul, he's happy, he's hyped up for this. He's like, so that's what you use? Man, I used to have to travel in boats, I used to have to sail to, to, to go places, and you have a phone? What did you do with it? I put John 3.16 in my bio. <laughs> I put, hey, whoa, don't worry, Paul, because I quoted you in my bio. That's right. That's right, Paul. You are quoted in my bio. Aren't you happy? Aren't you hyped up for that? <laughs> Imagine the disappointment on his face when he, when he's like, that's all you did? You have the technology. You have every single thing. You have no excuse. To, to say why you didn't serve, to show people who you are in Christ. Because it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to live it. It's, it's one thing to actually say I'm going to do it, but it's another thing to live it. And that's why you, we have to practice what we preach. In Romans 1.16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. Christ. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first, and also the Gentile. I am not ashamed of what God has done for me, of all he has, of all he has done for me. The least I could do is serve. Like, like think about it. Did Jesus die for us publicly so we could live for him privately? Did Jesus die for you publicly on a cross just so you could die, uh, not die, just so you could live for him by yourself, just so you could sit in a corner and, and, and praise him but while you have headphones in your ears? No. Yes, there's going to be people that judge us for living differently. But remember who your God is and remember what he has done for you before. Because if he's delivered you before, that he's most likely going to deliver you again. Who cares if people judge us for being different, for being a, for being a Jesus freak is what some people would do. Because I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. But there's this one type of fear that everyone in here has thought of. And it's the fear of failing God not being enough for him. How many of us in here have felt like we are not enough for God? That, that we're going to fail him. And a lot of times that we feel like we aren't worthy of his love because we, we fear that we mess up so many times that he will never love someone as perfect as us, as perfect as me. What if I mess up, God? God could never use a person that messes up as much as I do. And it's because we're living in that mindset that it is Preventing us from serving. Preventing us from feeling his love. And this mindset we're in, it's, it's holding us back. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but I, I felt God so ever clearly say to me, to tell y'all tonight, that you are enough. You, yes you, point to yourself, say I. I. I am enough. I am enough. Don't let any fear, any person, any what if, anything let you think that you aren't. Yes, you're going to mess up. Yes, we're going to fail. We're going to make mistakes. But God says it's okay to mess up. 
Just get back up and keep on moving. Your mistakes don't have to be your end. Your mistakes aren't the end of your story. They're just the beginning of your new chapter. Hmm. They're just a new beginning for you. For you to share. Yeah, yes, I mess up, but now I, now this can be my testimony. Now this can be what I use to share. God loves you through your mistakes, and that, and that standard of being perfect for Him is unrealistic. It's unreal. It will never happen. We will never be perfect. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do good things He planned for us long ago. You are God's masterpiece. Nothing you say or do can, can ever mess that up. Because God has renewed you. So are we going to mess up? Yes. Are we, going, are we going to have some type of what if, some type of fear? Yes. But it's if we surrender to it. Fear will never physically stop me. And Leo, could you stand up here? I'm sorry, I didn't tell you this. This is just out of the blue. I'm just Let's say, let's say. Come on, Leo. Now, now, Leo will, will be my fear. Fear will never physically stop me, right? Fear will never. I can I can walk all I want. Because fear is just in my mind. It's, it's just a mindset I have. Now the issue I have is when I surrender to that fear, and now Leo will get in the way. When I surrender to that fear, I am physically stopping myself, so I'm going to try to be physical with me, fear. <laughs> fear. Now, when I surrender to my fear, when I surrender to it, the issue is he's not going to let me get past it. Because I have chosen to surrender myself to Leo. No, to fear. And because I've chosen to surrender to fear, I will never be able to get past it. But when I surrender to God, fear can't touch me. Fear isn't going to touch me. Fear isn't going to get in my way because I am locked out of that mindset that fear is no longer going to stop me. Thank you, Leo. Woo! Fear is no longer going to stop you. When you surrender your trust, your light, and your faith to God, nothing can get in your way. And so you I'll ask you this one last time. What is your what if? What are you so afraid of? Who in here is afraid? Who in here wants to be delivered from your what if? If you want to be delivered, I encourage you to stand up, to make your way to the front right now and, and to fully surrender yourself right now. Say, God, you are bigger than my what is. God is bigger than your fears, than your what is. And it's when we choose to surrender our what is to him that I will start to show. So if we can just praise him in this place, just pray to him right now.